It's the giant salamander, the biggest of all living amphibians, that grows to a meter or more in length. It, too, has lungs and breathes air. But even so, it almost never leaves the water. Males make their dens in both natural and man-made retreats in the riverbanks and defend them against all other males. A newcomer arrives, looking for a breeding den of his own. The resident male has good reason to be so defensive. He's guarding a batch of eggs left by a female who visited him a few days earlier. Like fish eggs, amphibian eggs have no protective shell. They can only develop in moisture of some kind, and amphibians, no matter where they live, must find ways to provide that. The alpine newt lives on land for about half the year, hunting for slugs and worms. In winter, they lie dormant beneath the snow, but come the spring, they get the urge to breed. A female is swollen with eggs and needs to lay, so she has to go back to water. And there, a male is awaking her. He has already developed his breeding colours and knows how to flaunt them to impress her. He wafts a pheromone, a sexual stimulant, towards her with beats of his tail. She senses it through her nostrils. Caught her interest, he turns and moves away from her. His genital opening is greatly swollen, and from it comes a small white capsule. It's a packet of sperm. The female, led by the male, walks directly over it. He stops, and so does she, with her genital opening exactly above the sperm packet, and she picks it up. So, as in many fish, mating occurs with little or no physical contact between the two partners. Two or three days later, she begins to lay. Each of her eggs is deposited individually. As an egg emerges, she wraps the leaf around it with her hind legs and then holds it there while the edges bond. She will lay several eggs a day for week after week until eventually she may have produced several hundred. But all this has to be done in water. She has still not broken her link with her fishy ancestry. In North America, in the eastern half of the country, there are many kinds of small salamanders, only a few inches long, that have taken one further step away from the aquatic life. In spring, the woodlands are drenched in rain, and suddenly, in response, an amphibian army appears among the leaf litter. Marbled salamanders. First to emerge are the males. They're in search of females. 
They have spent the winter deep in the damp leaf litter, breathing by absorbing oxygen from the air through their moist skins. For them, the land is truly home. If they were submerged in water for any length of time, they might well drown. Nonetheless, their courtship techniques are much the same as those used in water by newts. The males produce pheromones that excite the females. They deposit capsules of sperm on the damp ground. And the females crawl over them and take them in. In due course, each female lays her soft-skinned eggs on the ground and stays beside them on guard. Here, it's damp enough to prevent her eggs from drying and they're already developing rapidly. Eventually, the continuing rains flood the woodland floor. But now, the female's needs and those of her eggs are exactly opposite. They will need water in order to breathe, but she could drown in it, so she has to leave. The young inside their capsules are developing into creatures fundamentally different from their parents, a form that is characteristic of amphibians. They are becoming tadpoles. They swim free, equipped with feathery gills that enable them to extract oxygen from the water. They are truly aquatic creatures. But they have front legs as well as gills. And within days, they develop back legs as well. As time passes, they grow stronger. Their gills wither and disappear, and at last they are miniature versions of their parents and are ready to leave the water forever and to start on their land-living lives. But what tempted those ancient fish to leave the water in the first place? Food. When the first amphibians moved out of water, the land was already swarming with insects. And the amphibians have evolved a special weapon with which to catch them. Salamanders, however, have not yet developed the athleticism needed for a high-speed chase and a lightning pounce. Their hunts are rather solemn, sedate affairs. A simple contraction of the muscles surrounding the tongue is all that's needed to shoot it forward. Some salamanders have a tongue that is about three quarters the length of the body, but most species have to get pretty close to their prey if they're to catch it. Although the adult marble salamander lives entirely on land, it nonetheless needed water at the very beginning of its life. But there are other species of salamander in North America that have managed to break even that link with their distant aquatic past. This is a gold mine. The people who dug it found nothing. But biologists who came later found gold of their own special kind. they discovered a colony of a species called the slimy salamander that could be properly observed throughout the summer when normally they're hidden in the leaf litter. They were all females, and their behavior proved to be very surprising indeed. These salamanders come down in early summer, in about June, and will travel several hundred meters down along this mine shaft to exactly the same ledge, within an inch or so, that they used the previous year. And they have been seen doing that for at least five or six years. And they don't eat. They will stay down here for six or seven months, sustained only by the food reserves that they've accumulated in their fat tails. Down here, there is permanent moisture 
however hot and dry it gets outside. The salamanders clearly prefer to cluster together close to one another, for the rock walls of the mine shaft elsewhere are totally uninhabited. However, this open plan way of life, while it's clearly very successful, nonetheless comes at a price. Some of the females here are up to no good. They failed to fatten up enough during the spring, and they're hungry and in search of a good meal. And the eggs and young of their other salamanders will do very well. To see exactly what the creatures are doing, you need to turn off our torches and turn on the infrared camera. Here comes one of those marauding females. She must have located this mother guarding her eggs by smell, for all this is going on in total darkness. So some amphibians, when needs be, are neither sluggish, insensitive, nor lacking in maternal concern. mother wins the day. <laughs>